Hey guys, this is Charles. Um, tonight we're going to take a look at the Hold the Line by Worthington Games. It's been a board game. It's been around for a while and it's got some nice expansions to it. And now they come up with the electronic version to cover the American War of Independence or the Revolutionary War. And uh, it does a good job of uh, uh, reproducing the board game. At first, I played it on the iPad and I really didn't like it, but I think I didn't really uh, see the controls, or I didn't feel like it had had, <clears throat> had controls of what was going on here. So, uh, another thing that I noticed on the iPad for some reason, it just did not seem like the enemy knew how to advance or how to retreat correctly. So uh, I felt like if I was playing against a person, they would know not to make the mistakes that it did. But tonight I've been playing on the PC, and it almost seems like the AI's done a little bit better. So I'm not sure if something's changed with it or if there's a different AI engine for the PC version versus the uh, the iPad. I will probably go back to that and play around with it some more. It does not have a multiplayer online version, so that's a little disappointing just because uh, it's, it's such a, a fun game to play with others. Um, we'll take a quick look at a mission here. You can choose which side that you want to play. We'll play as the Americans and uh, we'll play Harlem Heights here. So you have your difficulties levels. Uh, I've been playing everything on hard and uh, tonight the, the games that I played I really enjoyed. It's been good. Nice tight battles. Typically if there's music in the background I've got that turned off. Um, you know as in the regular game you're going to try to obtain six victory points and prevent the British from getting six victory points, and you've got 22 turns to do that. So the units in the game uh, look pretty good. Uh, it's got some nice little graphics with it. You've got leaders here, you can see, and you can see the values of the troop versus the value of the leader. Um, the way that you separate from the leader to the troop is clicking on this, these icons here. If you had cavalry, uh, you can separate there. Also, you can uh, do artillery the same way by clicking here if it's needed. So uh, by clicking on the unit, you can see your action points up top. These are the action points that you get each round. And then you'll typically, in the real game, roll a dice and get random uh, action points. And you can use these action points to activate units to either move or fire. Um, you'll notice down here, if you want to do a, a melee, you can spend an extra AP to go into melee, but we're too far away to do that. You've got a combat window up here. It kind of gives you uh, an idea of what's going on there. If you want to force march somebody, you can click on this button down here. Turn track is here. Uh, melee. Uh, ranged AP attack is here. And joining a leader and uh, separating a leader, is uh, you're able to do that here. So um, let's take a look at this scenario. So those flags are worth VPs and killing units is worth VPs. So you can stand and shoot um, or you can move. So you can see we missed on that combat. That's one unit down. So in the real game, uh, you would roll three dice. And on this hex, you would hit on a five or a six. And from this distance, you'll hit on a six. We're going to try to break that line up just a little bit. And it looks like we're out of action points. So we're going to end our turn. So I do find it strange that they could hit us while we're standing in the tree line, just because in the real game, a tree line gives you a plus one uh, modifier. 
So uh, at that range, they can only hit on sixes typically, and the terrain should give you a positive one modifier. So. Let's go ahead and come out and play. So we're out of action points up top. So we could use our cannon here and fire into that group. Then we could select our artillery or your infantry, and fire into that group. So these are the type of mistakes that sometimes I wonder uh, if the AI is actually doing a good job. Like it basically walked right into a trap that a regular player would never do. Um, when you roll enough dice against it, eventually it's going to die. And we're out of AP, but he's pretty pretty far down there. So if I were playing this game as the British player, I would back up and try to protect the flags. So one problem that you've got here is that the AI uh, seems to be wanting to advance forward. Probably should have moved that leader and one of those troops and force marched up there and just grabbed all the objectives. Probably been the best thing. These are light units, so they can move two spaces for one AP. So this is on the most difficult mode. And you can see kind of uh, what I was talking about as far as sometimes. The last scenario I played, I, I think, was more of a front to front. So there was uh, the British AI needed to advance, and there was really no problem with advancing. So. Uh, 
right? And this one environs, involves just a little bit of tactical thinking here, like which units are fastest, which can get around the enemy and behind them here. And they don't even be uh, seem to be reacting to the fact that I'm moving around. Uh, we do have some units over here, and you've noticed that uh, they haven't even activated any of these units. So they don't have a lot of AP to activate those units, but it just does seem strange that absolutely nothing is happening here, that these guys didn't back up. Like typically these guys will back up to try to protect these and they'll try to move these forward at the same time. So it does take some time, but Well, at least he's turning around now. Oh, looks like I already got that one. So I've already got four of the six. I do like the interface and what they've done with it, but I do think either having an online option where you can play against an opponent or changing the AI to kind of understand more of what the objectives are and how to protect those objectives. Um, honestly, you know, you're looking at, you're looking at seven turns here and uh, it's going to be an easy win, even on the hard mode. Let's go for the kill. Bring the militia in and make it a fight. Oops, I brought a leader out there by himself. My boys is standing pretty strong there. All right, so now he's starting to move those guys on the right. Let's see. So we'll do a, let's start with this one. Do a, a super strong melee with a extra AP added in there for the attack. All 
That should do them in right there. And we won the game. So we could try the same thing. I think that was Harlan. Let's try the same scenario. Oops. Okay, I pulled up the wrong scenario. So, um, this time we're going to play as the British player and um, kind of let the AI do what it's trying to do here. So as you can see, all the Americans are staying in the woods and just fighting there. And we're going to try to pop back over this line, get behind this fence and let them come to us. And I'm sorry, this is going so slow. And we're out of AP, so that's the end of the turn. Now it's the American player. I probably should have started from the top down, just to kind of get the uh, out of range for those units. And you can tell already this is going to be a better game just because there's going to be a point where the American player decides that he has to come out of there and come attack those guys. Uh, as the forces, the reinforcements are showing up. Get the cannons up here. So this is a tough scenario for the British. It almost feels like they should have more action points, but uh, I'm sure there's some sort of historical reason why these uh, units are having such a hard time getting actions. All right, so here they come. You know they gotta get it. So let's do a rally. I'll click on the leader. Click on a rally there. We'll bring that guy up to three. And then we'll start fighting over here. Already had action points. So I'm not going to. Uh, keep 
you know, recording here just because it's going to be a large video file of basically um, what you're seeing here. So my goal here is going to be to try to fight on the front as much as possible and bring it up the rear and try to bring them into battle. And if I can get those cannons into place and close to those flags, or I'll probably even back up a little bit more with that front line uh, if I can get the right amount of action points for the turn. But uh, you can see the differences when you have to think about retreating, which is a, an extremely important part of Rev War type games is uh, sometimes it is running away from the battle in order to keep the opponent from taking uh, victory points. So um, let's get out of there. I think these are my light units. Add points again. All right. Well, there you go. There's a quick look at Hold the Line by Worthington Games in the new PC version of the game. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I think that the scenarios that you pick can make a big difference on how the game plays. Uh, understanding the tactics of the Revolutionary War and the retreating might be an issue for the AI. Uh, maybe it can get better. Uh, this has a, um, a strong, similar appearance to the other games by... Uh, I think it's Hex War. Um, I like, you know, they're pretty simple. They're just straight up combat, this type of unit versus this type of units. And it's, and it's almost always advancing. And these scenarios are designed more as far as a overall tactical taking an objective thing. So uh, in the other Hex War games, all the objectives are kind of spread around the board and you kind of move towards it and you try to find ways to combine your firepower. Where this one sometimes retreating is, is a good thing to do. So uh, it's not a bad price, and it's one of the few war games that are out there for the iPad and for the um, uh, PC. So take a look at it. I hope you enjoy it, and take care.